In this video, we will demonstrate how to apply the shear formula to a wide flange beam, also known as an I-beam. Wide flange beams or I-beams are very commonly used structural sections and they are comprised of a vertical web and two horizontal flanges. The way we calculate shear stress and determine the shear stress distribution is identical to that for the rectangular beam. The only difference is that the calculation for Q is a bit more complex, and the term T in the shear formula is now a variable dependent on where the stress is being calculated in the cross-section. Here we have a cross-section of an I-beam with a moment of inertia of I and subjected to internal shear force of V. And this cross-section has the following dimensions. For the flange, a base width of B and a thickness of TF for the web, a thickness of TW, and the section height is H. Consider the location where the flange and the web intersect. So that is right here. We can call this the web flange interface. To calculate the shear stress at that distance, y, we section at that point. Then the sectioned area, what we know as a prime, is simply the flange area, b times tf. So A prime is the flange area, which we can find by multiplying the base width of the flange times the thickness of the flange. Y prime bar is the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of A prime. So that is half the height of the cross-section minus half the thickness of the flange. So writing that out, y prime bar is half the thickness of the full section minus half the thickness of the flange. Q, we know, is the product of these two values. And this simplifies to the following expression. So we sectioned at this web flange interface. Just above this interface, we can consider stress as stress in the flange. So the width of the cross section in the flange is the width of the flange. So what that means is at the flange, we have our T, which is the width of the section at the point we're looking at is equal to the width of the flange. And our tau is then VQ over IB. Similarly, right below the interface, we are considering the stress in the web. So then at the web, T is our thickness of the web. And we can write tau equals VQ over I T web. So we want to note that V, I, and Q are identical in both situations, both in the flange and in the web. Also, B and TW are in the denominator. So if we know clearly from the diagram that the value of B is much, much larger than the value of TW, so the shear stress in the flange will be much lower than the shear stress in the web. So how does the stress distribution look for a wide flange beam?
The stress distribution is still parabolic for wide flange sections, but a large discontinuity, or a jump, occurs at the web flange interface. Remember at the top and the bottom fibers, our shear stress is zero. And we can start from zero here at the top fiber. And we know that the distribution is parabolic across the flange. We just learned that the web carries significantly more shear than the flanges, so the stress distribution will jump and increase across this web flange interface. Drawing that here, this is the interface, and our shear stress should jump. The maximum shear stress still occurs at the neutral axis, and the distribution is parabolic. So the shear stress is maximum at the neutral axis. And because the section is symmetric about the neutral axis, we can mirror the distribution. So just to recap, we have a jump at the interface and our distribution is parabolic over the rest of the section. So now we have drawn the shear stress distribution for a wide flange beam cross-section.